Hello, welcome to Slater Baptist Church. We exist to glorify God in worship, grow in our love for Christ through intentional relationships, and go into our community and around the world with the gospel. So I have a number of announcements for us this morning. Uh, first, I want to make you aware that Slater Baptist Church uh, is starting an initiative where we are prayer walking every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we're prayer walking to the end of our driveways. Uh, so because of the, the current circumstances that we find ourselves in, we're encouraging folks to walk to the end of their driveways at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday nights and pray for each of the neighbors that they see, each of the neighboring houses that they see at the end of their driveways. We want you to pray for those people. Uh, we want you to pray for those people by name, if you know the names of your neighbors. Uh, and if you don't, we want you to pray that you would get to know those people, get to know them, uh, hopefully after all of this is over, and get to know them so that you can love them, so you can show them the love of Christ, and so you can share the hope of the gospel with them. Uh, so I want to make you aware, 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays, we're going to be prayer walking to the end of our driveways. I uh, also want to make you aware, uh, on Monday and Wednesday mornings at 8 a.m., uh, we're going to be walking through the book of First Thessalonians. So we've been doing that for a couple of weeks now. If you'd like to catch up on that, you can find those videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, and if you're not able to make it right at 8 a.m. on a Monday or Wednesday, if those times don't really work for you, you can catch those later. But would encourage you to, to watch those videos, to, to see what we've been unpacking, unearthing uh, in the book of 1 Thessalonians the past couple of weeks and, and tune in for uh, what we're going to be finding in that book next, you know, what the Lord is teaching our church in the book of 1 Thessalonians. We encourage you to go, go watch that. I also want to make you aware that uh, our, we have a blessing box on the corner of our parking lot. Uh, so that blessing box has food for uh, those who find themselves in need during this time. And that blessing box has been getting a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, traffic recently. People have been stopping by pretty frequently. Uh, and so we would love if you guys would be willing uh, for you guys to drop off uh, some canned goods, specifically canned goods with pop tops, to help us restock and keep that blessing box stocked uh, so we can keep helping folks in our community. People will be able to uh, come to the blessing box and, and take from it anonymously, you know, without having to come into contact with anyone else. Uh, and so it's been a really great blessing to our community. You know, our community has really uh, come to find uh, our our church, our church building as a place where they can come to find help. And we're super excited about that. We're super blessed by that. Um, so if you, if you could pick up some canned goods, specifically canned goods with those pop tops, uh, and drop them in this white box that we have on the porch of the church. Uh, so if you come up the church steps, right on that front porch there, there's a white box. If you can drop those cans in there, we'll get those sorted out and kind of uh, keep get those stocked into the box uh, as needed. Uh, and also want to make you aware, also on the front porch of the church, we have a, a table with some books on it. Those are free for anyone who would like to take them. Uh, so if you have uh, children who are interested in finding something to read, uh, or if you know someone who has some kids who would like some extra reading materials during this time, uh, we would encourage you. There's a bunch of, of children's books still out there. Uh, and so we want to uh, encourage you to go and uh, pick those up, take those home with you. Uh, and lastly, we want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, so YouTube has some tools uh, for uh, helping YouTube channels engage with communities. And some of those tools are only available if you have so many subscribers. Uh, and so we would encourage you, uh, if you are not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and do that, uh, not only because it helps us out, but also because you, you'll get notified when we put out uh, new content on the channel. So I'd like to open us up in prayer uh, as we begin this service here at Slater Baptist. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this time together. 
Thank you for community. Lord, thank you for uh, relationships. Lord, thank you that you are a God who loves your people, that you are a God who cares for your people. Lord, help Slater Baptist Church to be a church that cares well for each other and cares well for our community during this time. Lord, help us to glorify and honor you through some creative avenues to reach people despite the difficulties that we are currently facing. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for how good you have been to us. We thank you and we praise you that you have been faithful to us in the past, that you are being faithful to us right now, and that we know, we are confident that you will be faithful to us in the future. Lord, we thank you, we praise you for all that you are. In Jesus' name, by his authority, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. With the works of your hands, I sing for joy.
Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you.
Hello, so this evening we're going to be looking at Psalm 91. We're going to be focusing on uh, looking at the first six verses of Psalm 91. Uh, so Psalm 91 is a psalm that we don't have an, uh, an author listed for. We don't know who the author was. We don't know what the circumstances were that, that brought about this psalm. We don't know when exactly it was written. I mean, we don't know when exactly it dates from. But we have this psalm, Psalm 91, and I think it speaks greatly to what we're all feeling in this time. I think it shows us that as we abide in God, we trust Him more because of His faithfulness. As we abide in God, we trust Him more because of His faithfulness. So let me pray for us, and then we'll, we'll, we'll dive in. Lord, we thank You. We praise you, Lord, that you are faithful. Thank you. We praise you, Lord, that you are present with your people. Lord, that you love us. You are with us. You protect us. Thank you. In Jesus' name, by his authority. Amen. All right, so... The first six verses that we're going to look at tonight break up into uh, kind of two big parts. So we'll look at the first two verses. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So we see The psalmist here, he talks about dwelling in the shelter of the Most High, abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. He talks about trusting in God. I think that we as Christians have to abide and trust in the Lord. I think think these things go hand in hand. And so, when fear and uncertainty comes about in our life, for a lot of us, it causes us, it forces us, it pushes us to run to God. And that is often 
one of the greatest blessings of fear and adversity is the fact that it forces us, it forces a lot of us to realize exactly how dependent and how needy we are on the Lord. And it causes us to lean on the Lord a lot more than we do when days are good, when times are are pleasant, when we're not suffering, when we're not fearful, when we're not in need. And so these times of, of suffering, these times of fear and uncertainty can kind of can be an instrument that God uses to push us toward himself, to push us to be more like him. And one of the ways, one of the reasons for that is because times of adversity show us clearly what what is true all of the time, but that we have trouble seeing, and that is that we are completely and totally dependent upon God. We are completely and totally dependent upon God. The psalmist says that God is his refuge and fortress, his God in whom he trusts. The reality is that we must trust God in everything. We must trust God in all of our circumstances, but but that reality is so much more clear when we're faced against obstacles that are completely outside of our control. When we think that we have all of our all of our life together, when we think that we have everything under our own control, it's easy for us to forget about God. It's easy for us to forget to find our refuge, find our fortress in him. That does not make God any different. That does not change the character of God. It does not change the fact that we are completely dependent upon Him for everything, every day of our lives. And so when times of of fear and uncertainty, when these obstacles arise, when the circumstances seem to be entirely outside of our control, we run to God. And why? Because we see that God is almighty. We understand that God is all-powerful, that God is in control. We recognize that the need that we have, that the need that we have for someone greater than us to help us, to control our circumstances, to act in ways that we cannot act, we recognize that that has to be done God. We recognize that God, the Most High, that God, the Almighty, has to be our refuge and our fortress. He has to be those things. We recognize that during our times of greatest need, but that is so true all the time, every day of our lives, whether or not we feel in control or not. And so the psalmist says that he dwells in the shelter of the Most High, that he will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And we see that that this abiding is connected to trusting. He says that his God is whom he will trust. And I, I think I was reading this week, and I think someone said it really well. They said that, As we abide more, we trust more. And as we trust more, we abide more. That as we we abide more in the presence of God, we get to know him more. We get a deeper knowledge, a deeper relationship with him. And that builds our trust in the Lord. And as our trust builds, in the Lord builds, we desire to know more of Him. We desire to have a deeper relationship with Him, and so we abide more. And it's this building relationship that these, this trust and abiding in the Lord go hand in hand. And so then, moving on to verses 3 through 6, 
for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. Here we see that God is faithful through everything. So the psalmist here describes terrors of every kind. He describes pestilence. He describes being entrapped in the snare of a fowler. He describes having arrows flying at you. He describes terrors in the night, destruction in the noonday. In in verses 5 and 6, he he makes this contrast between uh, listing fears that come in the night and fears that come in the day. he, He talks about the terrors of the night, the arrows that fly by day, the pestilence stalking in darkness, the destruction wasting away at noonday, at the brightest part of the day. What he's getting at there is no matter when these things come against me, no matter what it is that comes at me, whether it's arrows or disease or destruction or just straight up terror, no matter what these things are that come against me, no matter when they come against me, he's holding on to something. He's trusting and abiding in God. And he says this, he will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. So, He gives this image of God as this this mother bird that's sheltering her young. It's such such a beautiful image to think about a mother bird sheltering her young under her wings. How how tender that is, that a mother bird protects her young from the elements, protects her young from the the enemies, protects her young from all of these different things by just putting them in the shelter of her wings, protects them with herself. There's a, there's a strength there. There's a strength there. If you're, if you've, you're not aware of the strength there, I would encourage you uh, to go make an attempt to take some young from a mother bird, and you will quickly find that there is strength there because you will be on the receiving end of that strength. There's a strength there, but there's also a tenderness there. To see the mother bird tenderly protecting her young, keeping them in the shelter of her wings. You know, that... That's a beautiful picture of what God is for us. There's a strength that God is almighty, but to his children, he shows himself to be tender. He protects his own by putting them under the shelter of his wings. And the psalmist goes on, his faithfulness is a shield and buckler. God's faithfulness is the very reason that we trust and abide in Him. God's faithfulness is the reason that we have to trust Him. It's the reason that we have to abide in Him. Because God is faithful, we know that He will protect us. We need God to protect us because we cannot protect ourselves. Like I said, there are circumstances outside of our control. There are all kinds of things coming at us all parts of the day, whether they're arrows or disease or terrors or 
pestilence, what have you, all of these things are coming at us, and we need, we need a protector. We need some shelter. And God shelters his children in the shadow of his wings. He, his faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. If you're not sure what a buckler is, it's just a, a small, round shield that someone would use to, uh, to fight off a, a sword in, in kind of hand-to-hand combat. And so this, this faithfulness gives protection to us because we are in God's faithfulness. God is our defense. God is our defense because he is faithful. God has always been faithful. I mean, before, uh, several weeks ago, we talked about the promise that God made to Abraham many, 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 many years ago. God promised Abraham that his descendants would be as the stars of the heavens. He made a wild promise to Abraham. Promised to make his name great. And God was faithful to that promise. God fulfilled that promise. And so, and so, because of the promises that we see, Scripture, because we see those promises being fulfilled in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that God is faithful. God is faithful to do what he promised he would do. And so, the Lord Jesus is the yes and amen of the prophecies and promises that God made to his people. The Lord Jesus came and lived a perfect life. He died for the sins of others to bear the wrath of God so that he might save a people for God. And he has been faithful. He's been faithful to those people. And so, I would encourage you today, if you have never believed in Jesus Christ, if you have never trusted in Him, if you've never abided in the Lord, I would encourage you today to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross to bear the wrath of God that he rose again on the third day and ascended to the right hand of the Father. Believe in him and repent of your sins to become a part of the family of God, that you too might experience his faithfulness. So, I would encourage you today, consider the promises of the Scriptures. Consider what the Scriptures have said about what God is to His people. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You. We praise You. Lord, for how gracious You are to us. We thank You and we praise You that we, when we put our trust in You, You are faithful. You are faithful to your people. You are faithful to your promises. You do not let us down. So, Lord, we abide in you. We trust you. We love you. We are thankful for your tender care. Like a a mother bird takes care of her young. We are thankful that you are almighty, that you are strong and you show yourself strong to those who would oppose your people. Lord, we're thankful. We're thankful that in you we have 
defense against the attacks of the enemy. A defense against the things that come against us, whether they be terrors or arrows or whatever they might be. We have a defense in you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, by his authority. Amen. All right, well, we're going to transition to some discussion questions. I hope you guys will discuss those with your house group leaders. Uh, and I look forward uh, to seeing you all again soon. <laughs>